YLTR drumming, life through rhythm, your best self through drumming. And let's take a moment of asking, what are you in most gratitude for? What are you most thankful for about playing this instrument? So think about just even the fact that we get to do this and we get to connect over this medium and we get to globally tap into great minds and learn. And that's what I'm in gratitude for. I'm in gratitude for you for taking action and really trying to do the work to uncover your best self through drumming. Right now, I'm excited to connect with you right now and share with you the session we have with the great Dom Famulero. You know, drumming's global ambassador. I'm back, drums. <laughs> I'm gonna hit each and every one of you. Now he's been a, a mentor of mine, a, a hero of mine when I was, I remember being 17 and just seeing him for the first time. It was like a freaking whirlwind tornado came into my local music store and just played and talked. And, and I remember, the, I don't remember what he said so much that day, but I remember the feeling. It's like I wanted to rush home and just practice. And, and it was awesome. And you just, you see him play and he's talking and he's sharing stories and it's also the way the whole group comes together. And if you've been to a great drum event, maybe with Dom or somebody else, it's, it's the synergy of one plus one equals three. So everybody in the room goes to a place that they couldn't have got to on their own, which can be like a great sports game or, or, or seeing your favorite band in, a, in an arena. It was like that same feeling. So I've known Dom since for, for over two decades and counting, and I still count him as, as one of my great mentors and teachers. And so we're honored to have him on the LTR Livecast. Now, if you want to go deeper, go to chrislesso.com and check out LTR Connect. There's a lot of free content you can get, and just, just check it out and see if it's right for you. We have these monthly, we have a, Dom is a regular contributor, but we have other special guests. And just imagine what it would be like to tap in with a group that will bring out your best self through drumming, where you can learn from me and get personal feedback and connection and live groups. We do this on Zoom. We connect around the world. It's, it's like small breakout rooms. You get to know people, but also lar sometimes larger master classes. And that's what this was, where we had Dom come in and just inspire us and bring our drumming and our character to the next level, because of course, they're one and the same. And that's what LTR is, life through rhythm, your best self through drumming. So it's not just about how fast you can play or the paradiddles or the grooves and all that's cool, but it's also who do you become on the path forward? Now, I think it's sad and wrong and a tragedy if you're, if you're trying to go about this like a lone wolf. We say isolation is the enemy of excellence. So if you're not connecting with mentors, teachers, it could be me, it could be Dom, it, it could be anybody that taps into that feeling of why you love this and what brought you here, what attracted you to drums and music in the first place, that's just that's just a crime. So we, we want to get you connected to the mastermind and the group that's going to elevate you to the best, the absolute best that you can be. So check out this LTR livecast with Dom Famulero. We're going to get into it. I know that when I was done with this, I wanted to rush to my drums right where I am now grab the sticks and go for it. It's like Dom has so much to share. 
a lifetime of knowledge, of course, as you know. And if you want to go deeper, go to chrislasso.com and check out LT LTR Connect to tap into the best of who you are to become your best self through drumming. We're here with Dom and I'd like to just, Dom, start out with a couple questions to you because I know you've done a few of these with, uh, with some different people. Like, what are you seeing as some of the victories drummers are having right now in terms of being able to keep learning, use this time to grow and to continue to practice and maybe get into some areas that we normally don't have time to explore and maybe connect with people like you that we don't normally get to connect with, but also some challenges that you're seeing drummers uh, face right now as well as we go through this time. It's enthusiasm to want to learn. And I start by saying that that is the first and foremost degree that I have always tried to maintain with myself is to be a constant learner. Now, one of the people I want you to meet is my little dog here. Come here, Em. Come here, come here, come here, come. come here. This is, this is my little mascot. This is Emmeline. I call her M. And she wants to be at my side the whole time. So she comes into the studio when I'm in here. And she just wants to be here with me no matter where I go. If I'm at my desk, she wants to sit next to me at my desk. So she's kind of like a drumming mascot. She is used to sound of drumming. She has, has got tremendous patience. And she just hangs out here. She was a, a rescue that we had that we decided to keep. So this is my little mascot here. So I'm going to put her in her little, her little bed there. Okay, there it is. Okay, so a couple of things, Chris. Great question. First of all, I have been teaching this way using the internet pretty much since first when Skype came out. Skype was the first program that came out that had video conferencing like this in, and I began to use it even when it was dial-up. Dial-up in the early days, about 15 years ago, was each computer had a separate box called a modem that you had to hook into your computer, and then you hooked your phone line into the side of that modem, and you went into it, and that's kind of how it was with dial-up. It was a slow process, but it worked. And I saw the advantage of this that I was able to teach students around the world. I have traveled to over 60 countries, so I've got many students that wanted lessons with me. So this concept, when I first started using it, seemed to be the best way to be able to do it. And it worked very, very well. So the advantage that we have right now with this crazy virus is that we have been given the blessed gift of time. The time to be home we're not being challenged by being home. We are being luckily and blessed that we are able to be home and safe and able to still have the degree of the want to learn and to be the constant student. So the first advantage is that we have the time to do this. Now I go pretty much from seven o'clock in the morning until six o'clock at night, constantly doing this with students one-on-one -on -one and master classes, and I go straight through every single day six days a week. So this is a pretty crazy lifestyle that has happened. And now because of this crazy virus with everyone being home, I have even gotten busier. So the advantage is that we have the opportunity with this technology to reach out. I am at my studio on the North shore of Long Island. Now what's amazing is outside my door right now is a massive hailstorm going on. So imagine with this massive hailstorm with the craziness of how wild it is outside, I'm in my soundproof room and I have the accessibility of being able to be hooked up through Chris Lesso to all you guys all throughout Canada. So the magic is, the first thing is that we have this ability. The second thing that I like about teaching online as a huge advantage is the fact that we have the ability of being able to see you and your own home, on your pad, on your drum set. I get to see you on your own gear. So the huge advantage is that I get to see how your drum sets are set up, what you're learning. So with my lessons, I analyze each student on how their drum sets are set up, maybe how they have their snare adjusted, how comfortable they are, so we can get very personal. When students come and visit me, 
they have a choice of one of these two drum sets behind me and they go on there, but they have to adjust it. And sometimes they don't feel as comfortable. So when I'm doing lessons via the internet this way, you're on your own kit in your own home. This is a huge, huge advantage that we have. Now, one of the downfalls that we have is the fact that there is so much information on the internet, we can get overwhelmed. We can get overwhelmed to a point that we don't know what to practice. So this is where the advantage of having a good teacher like Chris Lesso, and you mentioned even Carl Sloman up in the, the London area where he is, London, Ontario. So with this, having Chris here, Chris can guide you along the way to give you the bits of information drumming-wise that will hopefully give you a direction and a growth so you can learn this instrument. It, this is fantastic. By the way, you talked about traveling to your home studio, which I've done, which is a 13-hour drive one way. So if you guys are coming, <laughs> ever coming to my studio. Oh, there's Stefan. <laughs> That's Stephane Chamberlain live. Is he here? That's him playing, I believe. I don't, I don't see him. I hear him. Stephane, how you doing? I think he's playing. He's in his own world. He's in. That's <laughs> very well said. Steph studied with me for many, many years, and he was always in his own world. <laughs> and uh, I know, now did he do one of these last week? Yeah, he was on about a week and a half ago. And I was going to uh, ask him to talk about his 19-hour drive. To, <laughs> which he, did, he did once a month for, for nine years, Dom, was it? He did. And he would come down. To, and sometimes he would come down with his parents where they would drive down. And sometimes he would come down by taking the bus, which was even a little bit longer. And... What it took was dedication. Just like Chris and Stefan and Carl Sloman, these guys have all been great, great students of mine that have come down to learn this information that is so important to understand, the understanding of the, the techniques, which we'll talk about today, between Gladstone, Stone, and Moeller. Now, I know you may have heard those names before, but I'm going to give you a little history and a little exercise with each one of these guys. Fantastic. And I'd like to point out to everybody as well, kind of the spirit of what this – lesson is is like one foot knowing the history of the instrument who the great players were where the techniques came from mm. i sent out a really detailed email with some some kind of references and material that you guys can all use to check out and also one so one foot in the past knowing history but with a vision clearly set into the future and dawn was kind of talking about that in the days of AOL dial-up internet. And Dom, <laughs> even before that, I know you were doing, you know, so-called online lessons with like VHS tapes. Yes. Right? Like, like people it's... would mail you a VHS <laughs> tape with their performance and then you would mail it back to them with some details. Like, talk about that for a <laughs> minute. That, that's going back to the 90s, really? It really, it actually went back to the early 80s when I started traveling around the world. And um, you know, with, with Sa I've been with Sabian Symbols now for 31 years. And this great company has supported me, as with Mapex Drums. They've supported me to travel around the world. I'm playing remote drum heads, Vader sticks, and these companies are 100% supportive of allowing me to travel around the world to really kind of understand and reach as many people as we can. Well, in the early days of the early 80s, way before the internet, we didn't even know what that word was at that time. Students, I would travel the country, they wanted to study with me, so I would have them mail me a video cassette of, an eight, of, of a, a VHS tape of 15 minutes of their playing. They would mail me an audio cassette, and they would mail me that with a check for the time for an hour lesson. I would receive that, I would watch the video, make notes on it, come up with different exercises, and then put the audio tape on and speak while the video was performing to let them know what I saw. And it was actually fantastic. I would then mail the videotape and the audio tape back to wherever, wherever it was. And I was getting these packages from like 30 countries. At one point on my desk, I had 50 to 60 video packages from students around the world on my desk. So when my family would go to bed at like eight o'clock at night, I'd go back down to my office in my studio and I would pop in a video. I'd spend an hour, I would do it. 
I would finish it. I would do the next one. So I would do three or four videos a day reaching students around the world. Well, once the, this World Wide Web came about, it opened up a whole other way of being able to have this accessibility. And who would have ever thought that we would have this ability that from my studio here, in the middle of a hailing rainstorm, the hail is coming down. These things are huge when they're coming down. It's crazy out there. And in the midst of this storm, the clarity of this from my Wi-Fi in my studio through to the satellites, to Chris, to you, this really is pretty powerful. <laughs> Amazing. And I, I have seen some students that are uh, 100% in the future. So they're like, I don't need to know all that stuff in the past. I want to you know, find my sound and look to the future. And you have other drummers that are kind of stuck in the past. They're, they're like a little too much trying to emulate you know, past players and just where you can get stuck in that time. But really having a balance of the two is essential. And Klaus Hessler, who we're having on next week, is, is yeah. a drummer that I've also seen that. And it's, it's kind of rare sometimes to have that balance of the past and the future. And I, I have to credit you, Dom, with really uh, inspiring me with open-handed drumming. Mm. In 2002, so we're talking about the balance of history in the future. Dom played traditional grip and cross for many years. And then to challenge himself, really just reinvented himself in 2002, which was taking what he learned from history and launching it into the future by just reinventing himself in a whole new way. Can you talk about that for a second, Dom? Because that must have take, that takes massive guts to be able to do that and wow. Thanks, Chris. What's interesting about this is I say to all of you listening, as you hear my voice and even see my image, I love the fact of challenging myself. If I challenge myself, that means I'm on a path of growing. If I'm growing, I'm learning. If I'm learning, I evolve into a much better person. Knowledge is power. So for me, what happened, as Chris had said, for 37 years, I played traditional grip and cross-handed playing. And I played this way for 37 years. I had no challenge with it. My technique was great. But I realized that there were limitations. Because when you want to play traditional grip and play very loud, this grip was not designed to play very loud. Although my right hand had the power of playing loud with total relaxation. And what helped me make the change was as we entered the year 2000, I realized on the cover of Time Magazine was a picture of the man of the century. 100 countries voted who was the greatest mind in the 20th century. And they voted Albert Einstein. The great Albert Einstein, this incredible genius of a man, was, was voted the greatest mind in the 20th century. And that's because Albert Einstein opened up many ideas of things that we have. The concept of being able to understand x-rays and, and all these different, the x-rays that were done in hospitals, that came out of Einstein's theory of relativity. Fluorescent lights, all of this, even satellites, even to the internet that we have right now. Einstein opened the doors of thinking. This man affected everyone that's on this planet, a brilliant, brilliant mind. His theory of relativity, absolute brilliance. So, since he was the man of the century, especially in the century that I was born in, I wanted to know more about him. So I started reading tons of books. 2000, so by 2002, I had already read about 10 to 15 books on Albert Einstein. What an interesting man and an interesting life. Well, the quote that really impressed me, a reporter had asked him back in 1950. He died in 1955. So a few years before he died, the reporter asked him, Mr. Einstein, how have you been able to think out of your mind to create all of these doors that opened up for all these things to be invented? How have you been able to do that? And Einstein responded to that reporter. He said, you cannot solve new challenges with old solutions. You cannot solve new challenges with old solutions. So what that meant was I was playing this way. I was trying to play contemporary music and playing hard and powerful, but I was using an old solution. 
This whole solution in this script was created because of the marching drummers that marched on the side. And when the drummers on the side, when they marched, they played this way. That was the way the grip worked out real well. It was difficult to play this way, so they used this grip. So by playing this grip, they solved the challenge for marching drummers when you're standing and the drummer's on your side. Well, the drum set has changed a complete different setup. With the drum set, the snare drum is in front of me and I'm sitting. So the challenges were changed, but yet I was using an old solution for a new challenge. So that's really what made me change to match grip and open-handed playing. Because I realize now, open-handed playing, my weaker hand, my left hand, is developing so much more by playing the hi-hat, and my right hand, my strong hand, has the freedom of going around the drums. So I ask you all, when this session is done, sit behind your drum set and just play a basic groove. Ooh, bat. Ooh, just play this basic groove, open-handed, and start to realize that your weaker hand will start to develop more and more. This opens up so many great opportunities. Outstanding. And it's just that, that spirit of going into the unknown, challenging yourself, and always just living on that edge, which I love, and it really inspired me. So thank you. <laughs> and that balance of going into the future and going into the past with the rich knowledge that's there. So let's go into some of the uh, techniques. And guys, get your questions ready. We've done some Q and A's for a couple of these past live casts and, and sometimes everybody freezes because we're so, you know, into, into what's going on. And sometimes it's like, Oh, I wasn't prepared for the question. <laughs> right, get, get your questions ready. You can type them in the chat and Don, maybe we could go into the, uh, if everybody has seen the teacher drum teacher lineage, mm. so everything kind of going back to where this came from and these basically three, great teachers and these techniques and the different grips and how we could all uh, take this into our playing dog. Well, great question, Chris. And what this came down to was, and again, if you have my drum teacher lineage, you can download that from my website, domfamilara.com. Just go to free downloads and there's several articles and documents that you can download to have that I think will open your mind. What Chris is saying, the object is to go back to the past so we can better understand our direction to the future. When I wanted to understand the kind of person I am and some of my strengths and quality and some of my weaknesses, I went back and I sat down and I interviewed my grandparents. They're long gone right now, but I sat down and I interviewed them and I wanted to find out where they came from and what they thought about and what drove them. What were the qualities of their personality? Well, each of my, my grandfathers and my grandmothers were very strong people. They came from Italy. They had strong challenges in their life. And when I saw those challenges and heard them speak about it, it gave me an understanding of qualities that my parents had. Then I sat down with my parents and I asked them about those qualities and I began to understand more of the qualities that I have. And that drive and that desire to learn really goes back to my parents and also to my grandparents. So we go back in the past to give us the qualities of what we can have for the future. I was fortunate to hear Max Roach, the great jazz drummer, Max Roach, phenomenal jazz player. I heard him perform 1971, I was 18 years old. And when I went there to hear him play, he just blew me away. He had such freedom. He played a lot of match grip and he played and he blew me away with his speed, his control. The guy was unbelievable. Creativity. Every solo he played was very different. So after the show was over, everyone left. I walked up to the stage and I said, Mr. Roach, I have got to just shake your hand. So he reached down and he shook my hand. And I said, can I ask you a question? How do you have such freedom? freedom to be able to play around the drum set with such creativity and such ease and relaxation. He just, whatever thought in his head that he could hear, he played. It was immediate. It was unbelievable. He said to me, he leaned over and he said, Billy Gladstone, George Lawrence Stone, and Sanford Moeller. He gave me three names. And he said, those three gentlemen have three different techniques. If you understand those movements, you will have the freedom that you want. Well, 1971, I said, boy, this is fantastic. I said, I'd like, to, I'd like to take lessons with these guys. And Max said, too late. They're all dead. Done. Finished, kaput, over. 
six feet under. Nice talking to you. So it turned out with this process that I said, oh my gosh, they had all died in the mid 1960s. Here it was 1971. So my next question is what impressed Mr. Roach? I said, well, I said, Mr. Roach, since they're gone, who were their best students? I want to learn this material. So I want to go to their best students. So under Billy Gladstone was the great jazz drummer, Shelly Mann. Under George Lawrence Stone was Joe Morello. And under Sanford Moeller was Jim Chapin. Those became my first three immediate teachers to understand these techniques. And that to me is where the journey began because these teachers, Billy Gladstone, George Lawrence Stone, and Sanford Moeller, all of their students were all the great drummers. Buddy Rich, Gene Krupa, Joe Morello, Louis Belson, Max Roach, Elvin Jones, Papa Joe Jones, Billy Joe Jones, all the great drummers that I looked up to were all students of Gladstone, Stone, and Moeller. That blew me away. That's where I wanted to begin, and that's where we could begin showing some of these concepts. Let's do it. Guys, does anybody have any questions so far before we get into it? Um, I do. Ben, good to see you. You're on with Dom. Uh, good to see you. Um, hi, Dom. I'm wondering, uh, what's your favorite groove or rhythm to play on the drum kit? Ben, fantastic question. I'm a real fan of all the rudiments. And there is a groove. If you have the book Stick Control, in Stick Control, if you open up the Stick Control to the first page five, number six. Number six as is an inverted paradiddle. I love this rhythm. Check it out. Here is the paradiddle. A little faster. Number six is kind of an inverted paradiddle. They kind of take the paradiddle and kind of start it from a different place. So that sticking in number six becomes right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. It sounds like this. A little faster sounds like this. A little faster, it's here. Now, if I play that same pattern on two different sound surfaces, let's say my pad and the side of the pad, slowly it sounds like this. A little faster. That to me is such a great exercise to use on the drum set where you can play it between hi-hat and snare. Oh my gosh, that becomes fun. And then you can play it not only as a groove, but also as a fill. Number six, stick control, page five. Ben, go for it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, great question. <laughs> great question, Ben, great question, Ben. And Rachel's asking where where can she find that? That is, uh, oh man, yeah. Oh, she just answered number number six, page five. That's it. Right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left. Stick control. Here's the book. Stick control. Okay, so understand the book. Stick control. This is very important. This book, I actually helped the family. George Lawrence Stone wrote this book in 1935, and about ten years ago. He had passed away in the mid-1960s. His five children all passed away before the year 2000. So George Lawrence Stone's grandchildren, his descendants, are the ones that organized the book. They contacted me because they know I've gone through this book many, many times. And they know I was a student of Joe Morello, who was the top student under George Lawrence Stone. So when I've taught students like Chris Lesso and Stefan Chamberlain and Carl Sloman, these guys are all now on that lineage under me getting this information. So I helped the family with the book Stick Control, and in here, there are several quotes 
of famous drummers. I'm, I'm fortunate to be one of them on the inside of the book. And also on the back cover of the book, there's also some, some quotes here, some great guys stuff, but also in the book, check this out. In the book, there's a picture of George Lawrence Stone on the drum set a couple years before he passed away. Check this out. You see that? Now, a real, a real fast story about that when you get the book and you see it. When I was working with the family, we were going to re, redo the book so it looked a little cleaner, re-engrave it on finale. So I had someone doing that. And I said to the family, I said, you know, there was a picture that I saw when I took lessons with Joe Morello in 1971. There was a picture of your grandfather playing the drum set that Joe Morello had in his room. I said, I always used to enjoy that picture because it was George Lawrence Stone just a few months or maybe a year before he passed away playing the drum set. And it was a snapshot that Joe Morello had in his teaching room. Every lesson I had, I'd go by and see that picture. So I said to the family, do you think one of your cousins can find that picture? They said, boy, Don, that might be difficult. Well, they went back and they looked and they found the picture. They found it, and I said, that's fantastic. I would like that picture in the book with his signature. So that's really what you see. You see the, the picture of George Lawrence Stone with his signature, and it just gives tremendous history to this fantastic book. And all great drummers go through this book. Chris Lesso is still going through this book. Oh, yeah. Stefan Chamberlain is still going through this book. Carl Sloman still goes through this book. So I ask you all to pick up the book and go through the book, and on that first page, there are many variations of stickings, and that's where that one came out, which was the inverted paradiddle, number six. I love that one. <laughs> awesome. We got some questions coming in. Dom, I have a request. I've seen you rock that idea of the inverted paradiddle uh, on the drum set between the hi-hat and the snare, usually on like the second uh, auxiliary hat. Yeah. Kind of, kind of a David Garibaldi idea, but mm -hmm. on Zoom, uh, if I could just ask you to adjust the settings just so we hear the drums. Sure. So let's pause the lesson for a sec. Guys, shoot your questions in, in the chat while we do this. I'm going to go into mute, right? Into, into yeah, my, into... it's not drummer friendly. So you see the air. Audio like, settings. Yeah, audio settings and then advanced. Advanced. And what do you want? And do you see where it says suppress persistent background noise, suppress intermittent background noise? You got to disable both of those, please. Disable that. Disable that and keep the echo cancellation on auto. Yeah, and it should, that's perfect. It should be great. Guys, we're there. We got it. I think that should be it. And I just, I just close it. It stays there. That's it. It should, let's test it out. Yeah, Dom, if you could get on the kit. I, I love hearing you play that groove. And I'd so here's love the to, groove. to hear that. Can you see my kit here? Yeah, perfect. All right, guys. So this groove now, I actually had a student that was in here doing some practicing and he raised my hi-hat here. So let me see if I can just bring my hi-hat down again. There it is, let's get this back down again. So again, open-handed playing brings us to here. All right, so that, so here, how's that sound? Perfect. Woo, babe, here's the inverted paradiddle. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Guys, one of the benefits of these live casts is like when when we sign off, I want to play. And that is that is a sign that we're on the right track, right? Like literally every time. And I'm, you know, I'm honored to be hosting these, but I'm I'm like 
a student just like everybody else here. And that made me want to get to my kit and play, guys. And did you see the ease and the effortlessness that Dom was able just to move around the kit? So that's what we're going to get into today. Yeah. Uh, we just have a, a couple questions in the chat yeah. before we get to it. Um, Ale has a great one. And it's... Uh, let me just go up to it here. So it's, what what is a benefit of traditional grip, kind of knowing that it doesn't solve any challenges, literally, because we don't put drums around our necks anymore, and it slants. But the way I, I've always answered this, when people have asked me this, is it challenges the brain to think a little differently, so it might spur on a different creative idea, because I've got one muscle group moving, rotating, and one going up and down. So it becomes asymmetrical instead of symmetrical. So my brain might come up with new ideas and I, I might get closer to certain drummers that I'm, you know, like the Elvin Jones and Max Roach, and I might get into their heads a bit more and it might make me feel different and thus, you know, create differently. But as far as a practical advantage, does it make you faster? You know, do, does it uh, solve any challenges getting around the kit? I'd say no, but I would say it might spur on some creativity. What's your answer to that, Don? Is there, because I've, I've actually got some students that are loving it, checking it out, you know, getting into a heritage kind of point of view of it. What do you think? Absolutely, Chris. You know, a couple of different things. So what I always say with traditional grip, I, I played this way, as I said, for 37 years. And that grip is still with me. I really don't use it at all. I do everything match grip, and I feel much better with it. But if you play traditional grip, the first thing is if you find joy out of it, if it makes it fun for you and you're happy with it, that's the first and the only reason you need to play it. If you enjoy it, you're having fun with it, go for it. Play it and use it and have a great, great time with it. The other thing is, you know, in acting, if you want to be an actor, there's a concept of teaching it's called method acting. And method acting is to put yourself in the role of what you're playing. So if, if you were to play an old man and you dressed up like an old man and you slouched over and you put yourself the way an older person would be, the method is you're putting yourself inside that person's life and it's easier to act by playing that role. So I say for this, if you want to play this, if you're trying to play and understand players like Elvin Jones and, and Philly Joe Jones and Art Blakey and Buddy Rich, Louis Belston, all these great forefathers that came before us, if you want to step into their world of playing, method acting puts you in this grip. So if you're in this grip and you're hearing how they're playing, it's going to put you into the, the same frame of mind and the same feeling that they played, and that will bring you closer to their playing. So I say, playing traditional grip, if that's your thing and you enjoy it, absolutely. Go with what gives you joy. Go with what brings you fun and satisfaction. But realize the fact that it's going to take a little bit more attention. You see, in your right hand, if I'm using, holding my stick this way, which is Germanic position, there are 13 muscles in this hand. And in this position, it allows me to use all 13 muscles. Fantastic. In traditional grip, I'm only using four of those 13, two up and two down. You can hear how much stronger my match grip playing, my German position is playing than this. So again, understand the difference of it, get a feel for it, go for it, try it. Again, if it's working out great, Stay with it. If it's not working out so great, go back to match and just keep on using. They are just different tools, just like we would use different tools to fix my house. We use different tools to play the drums. I love it. And it is a tool. And, and why limit, you know, the whole, the whole theme is limitlessness, like to yeah. remove limits, right? So if it's a tool, it's there for you to use. Rylan has a fantastic question. Uh, Dom, I have a question. Do you have any tips from your personal experience on how you made it in the drum world 
and what's your story on becoming a professional drummer? Well, a great question. Very, very good question. You know, I began at the age of 11 playing drums. I took lessons for a year. And at that time, by the time I hit 12 in 1965, after one year of playing, I had a pretty good beat and I had a you know, good, good sound. So I, I joined a band and that band started to work to make money. So by the time I was 12 years old, I was playing in a band and I was working around my area. So I would first say, join a band, put a band together and just start playing and jamming. Even if it's in the, the garage of your, of your house and you get together with a band and you jam and the object is to go there and not always sound good. Just have fun jamming. If it doesn't sound good, keep on playing and keep on working on how you can make it sound good. So the first thing is start playing actively. When you start playing actively and you start to meet other musicians, even if you're just jamming, when you meet other musicians, word starts to spread out. A bass player hears you, he's jamming with you, he goes someplace else, he has another, another job that's happening, and a guitar player says, man, I wanna put a band together, I need a drummer, and that bass player remembers working with you. So if that happens, oh my gosh, that's how the word spreads. We call that networking. So when you start to network and you start to play with many musicians, they get to know you. If they like your playing, they're going to start talking about you. And that's how word gets out. And that's really how it happened for me. But I also seeked out teachers. And I studied with many teachers because I knew if my teachers really liked the way I played, if they heard anything, they would recommend me. And that has happened with many of my students. Someone needs someone, boy, contact this person, go back over here, do this here. I recommend students all the time. This is fantastic. So go out there and play along to records. If you want to play along to records, put on music, put on some Zeppelin music and play along with John Bonham. Play the music and just get a feel for playing to music. And as you feel more comfortable, then playing with live bands will be even easier. And also what's available now that we never had when I was younger, when there's so much product that has play-along music, that has play-along music, that you can go out there and purchase these books that have music without the drums. Oh, my gosh, there's so much of that out there. So go out there and seek that. Chris can give you direction. Jeff Salem has stuff out with that. Joe Bergamini has stuff out with that. There's so many great artists that are out there that have great play-along music that you can pop into your headphones and just have fun playing, and that will, of course, give you the skill the better your skill, the more people are going to hear about you. Go for it. I love that. And I'll just add something uh, to that, that Dom said to me many years ago that I never forgot, which is, well, the, the LTR concept is we, we play who we are. So mm -hmm. who we are as people comes out on the drums. You know, Billy Cobham said, the drums are really a character mirror, which I, I love that. Mm -hmm. And you said to me years ago, you said, Actually, you asked a group, I think it was a COSA, and he said, guys, what is your reputation? What does it mean? Yeah. And we got, you know, this definition, that definition, no one really nailed it. And when we really got clear about it, your reputation is what do people say about you when you're not in the room? Mm. Right? So besides becoming a fast drummer and having all the tools on the kit, really it's like, you know, what, what do you, are you honest? Do you have yeah. a reputation? Are you fun to be with? You know, that balance of like taking it really seriously, but also learning to laugh. Like one thing I love about, about you, Dom, is like, no matter how serious it gets, we can <laughs> laugh and we can, we can keep our sense of humor. We're really Absolutely. Kidding. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so as far yeah, as, I, I, yeah. I wrote a book. I wrote this book several years ago. This is exactly what you're saying, Chris. I wrote this book, The Cycle of Self-Empowerment. And this book now is available on Kindle as a digital download. It's not expensive. I would highly suggest go get the book because this talks about self-empowerment, which is exactly what Chris is saying. You've got to understand the kind of person you are and you want to deliver that through your music. But well, listen, if you're a happy, honest, you know, positive person, that's going to come out in your drumming. If you're an unhappy, negative, sad, depressed person, you're probably going to play bass guitar. <laughs> <laughs> 
Guys, bass player jokes. We're <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna rip on. This is a Chris. This is a tough crowd. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we got nineteen more, man. Bring it on! Bring it on! Uh, awesome. Yeah, and and Chris is typing in. Um, Chris is a, a friend of drummers, a great friend of drummers and supporter, of course. But and she types in in brackets, I'm the mom of a drummer, which actually means manager, Uber driver, cheerleader, <laughs> financial supporter and all that, right? And she got the books years ago and, and she says she loves it, great message and insight. So right. yeah, thank you for writing that. That also impacted me as well. Thank you, we have thank ton, you so much. We have a ton of questions about foot technique and yes. the party shuffle. So let's let's uh, let's see, maybe let's attack the, the, uh, the foot technique first. And there's a lot of questions coming in about that. Um, I would point out that Dom also many years ago told me, Chris, if you want to get your feet together, take tap dancing for six months. That's right. And I did it. I actually took it for seven months. <laughs> <laughs> this was over 20 years ago. And yeah, I signed up at a local school. I knew nothing. It was fun. And, and guys, have fun, like, not knowing something. Have fun sucking at something. Embrace the suck. <laughs> and I was just in this class and doing these crazy exercises, and I can still kind of – I'm not going to do it live right now, but I can kind of uh, remember a few of the steps, and it just shifts your perspective on what double bass is, and really so many of the great players had that, you know, that, that, that connection with, with, with tap dancing. You know, yeah. an old school connection like which is in you know about a century ago so Don maybe you could get into some foot technique and maybe uh, tie in the stick control year-long exercise into that because absolutely I know well, a couple, that's a good one. absolutely a couple things there is a um, uh, my sister is a dancer so growing up we we danced and and she is a, is a great tap dancer as she is in, in, in many different types of modern jazz and, and contemporary uh, dance. And uh, by, by tap dance is very important because tap dance, all the great early drummers, Buddy Rich, Louis Belson, Papa Joe Jones, uh, uh, Roy Haynes, Jack DeJanette, Louis Belson, Morello, all these guys were great tap dancers. Steve Gadd is a great tap dancer. They understood tap. So that was foot motion. Tap is balance rhythm and movement balance rhythm and movement drum set playing is balance rhythm and movement so there's a very similar understanding of those two different art forms so what i ended up doing was i started to analyze foot motion and i wrote this book with a fantastic friend of mine and a great great drummer joe bergamini and stephen chamberlain also assisted with these in helping out with this book too pedal control and what this book does is it explains the four different feet positions that we use when we're playing drums. So position one is heels down. So if your heel is down on the floor, you're playing heel down. Let me see if I can, if I can bring this back over here and come over here. If I come down to this here, can I come over here? Yeah. So if I'm playing heels down, can you see me here? Yeah. Okay. So heels down, my feet are on the floor. I'm playing with my heels down. So just all of you, where you are right now, just try this. One and two and three and four and right, left, right, left. Just try that either on your drums or on the floor. Just move your, foot, your feet this way, heels down, and feel what's happening. And start to feel the fact that the muscles are going to stretch and you're going to feel. Yeah. Feel that. Heels down. Heel on the floor. Keep doing it and feel that. Are you starting to get a little tired with it? I got a burn. Okay. okay, hold it right there. So you're starting to feel the burn. What that burn is, that playing heels down, that means that those muscles are not that developed and they need to be stretched and developed. Now, heels down. When I go to when I go to the drum set, can you see the drum set here? When I go to the drum set, that's heels down. Now you might say to me, oh my gosh, I don't play heels down. 
absolutely. But the key thing is practice heels down because the more you practice heels down, the better you play heels up. The more muscles are developed. And have you ever heard of the drummer Gene Hoagland? Oh, yeah. Go research Gene Hoagland. I showed Gene Hoagland the foot technique. And if you go check out his two DVDs, he mentions me on there and talks about my technique. Go watch his playing. Gene Hoagland, H-O-G-L-A-N, Hoagland. This guy is a monster, a monster player. And his feet are incredible. And again, he practiced heels down, but he plays heels up. So position one was down here. Position two, Chris, it gets a little different now. Position two is we lift the heel up a little bit, but we play from the actual foot. So my left foot would be here. If you notice, my leg is not really moving. It's coming from my foot. So this, a great way to practice this, is take a stick, put it under your leg, hold your leg up, and just tap your foot. So just do this. Notice I'm not moving my leg. Just try this. You see where that's at? Are you trying it? How does that feel? Everybody's doing it. Can you feel it? Woo! So that stick holds your leg up, but it's coming just from your ankle. There's no leg motion, just your ankle. It's kind of amazing. My female students always do this better. <laughs> I don't know why they do it better. Maybe it's because most of, the, of, the, of the, my female students dance and they take dance lessons when they were younger. That motion right there. Then change feet and try your left foot. Again, no leg motion, just ankle. Can you feel that? Keep doing it. Feel the burn. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Dom, can you demonstrate like a something double bass on the kit? And I want everybody to watch Dom's center of gravity and also his seat height, which is just a little, his knees are just below his hips and he's got a really strong center as he goes around the kit and incorporates his feet. Check this out. This, this motion here. Yeah. Could you hear that? Oh, yeah, loud and clear. <laughs> so what happened with this is that that ability of being able to have strong feet is very, very important. Position three is ankle and leg, where we practice this. Now I'm using my ankle and my leg. Position four, woo, heavy metal. Yeah. Could you hear it? We could feel it. <laughs> so this book that I wrote, Pedal Control, I highly suggest, pick it up. There's video in there that you can kind of see all these different techniques and understand it and take yourself and push yourself to the next level of developing your feet to a higher sense.
Outstanding. Great question. And, uh, you guys can see why when I go to see, when I do the, I've done the 13 hour drive and I go to see Dom and we, I book at least two hours and you can see how freaking fast it goes. We're already <laughs> at an hour. So we'll go a little bit longer, but uh, let's do some, uh, we got a lot of questions actually about the Purdy shuffle. Now the yes. shuffle really incorporates to me, like all the techniques that we talked about earlier with the, um, in terms of stone, Gladstone and Moeller really mm -hmm mixing together you know with with pullouts and some of the more more uh where they all kind of swirl together absolutely so, dom if you could uh maybe quickly demonstrate that in the kit and then we'll take it to the pad and we'll deconstruct just some of the techniques that go into that absolutely and just remember in utilizing the wrist motion from stone then molar and maybe some of the fingers, that shuffle will have different hand positions and different movement. So if we bring that here, we'll go over here. If we bring this here, and I get to this. <clears throat> Watch carefully, guys. be either a sensitive feel it can be a medium feel or it can be a hard feel so go listen to bernard purdy on several of the steely dan recordings where he plays a very light shuffle then go listen to jeff procaro play the tune rosanna which is kind of like a medium sounding shuffle and then go listen to john bonham on the song fool in the rain and hear a hard shuffle of course, many of the jazz players, the great Max Roach, the great Roy Hearns, Elvin, they all played shuffles in a very different way too. So step into the world of shuffling. It's a great groove, it's fun to play, and you'll have a great, great time doing it. I love it, thank you. Well, I'm on my pad. Everybody's got uh, their pads with them, I think, on the call. And Dom, if you could, sometimes we, we I, I love to practice on the pad. I, I think it's, it's fun and, and, but some people it's like a bit of a chore and, and they're not as much a fan of the pad as the kit. If you could just yeah. quickly tell the story of, of your teacher and mentor, Joe Morello, and how it was nine years <laughs> he had you on the practice pad. And I think the story is you, you said that the, the, the silver sparkle kit was, was there in the lesson room. <laughs> He never let you play it and you could reach out and touch it. And you said, Joe, when are we going to get to the kit? And what did he say to you? He said, he asked me three questions. We were, we were, I was about three years into our lessons. We had only worked in the practice pad. And as Chris was saying, remember, Joe, Joe played a, a silver sparkle drum set. And I used to watch him on television on Sundays on a show called The Ed Sullivan Show. And I'd watch him play with his band on TV and then Monday, I'd have a lesson with him, and that drum set would be in the studio. So we'd have the practice pad, and every lesson for the first three years was only on the practice pad. So when I asked Joe, Joe, when are we going to get to the drum set? Joe kind of looked at me. He held the sis. He looked at me, and he kind of crossed his arms and said, let me ask you three questions. He said, 
how do your hands feel now? I said, Joe, my hands feel fantastic. They have such control, way better than I've ever had before. They feel great. He goes, great. How is your creativity on the drum set when you're playing? I said, boy, because my hands feel good, my creativity is so opened up, I've got so much more freedom. He said, okay, question number three. How does the band that you're playing with like you're playing? I said, Joe, my playing, they love it because I'm playing so much more relaxed because I have more control when I'm playing. He said, excellent. Then we've already been on the practice pad, uh, on the drum set, let's go back to the pad. In other words, you already got your drum set stuff you're working on, back to the pad. And we stayed on that practice pad for the remainder of my lessons many, many years. We only played the pad. But because of that, my drum set playing grew tremendously. Now, I say to my students, we're going to work on the pad, but we're also going to work on the drum set just to have some more fun on it. So the object is to find a balance between both. The key is to have fun. Outstanding. Can you give us a couple exercises that embody all three of those techniques? Absolutely. So let's start with let's start with stone. Okay, stone. We're going to go to let's go to Germanic position, and we're going to play sixteenth notes at this tempo. One, two, ready, go. Now everybody's muted, but they're doing it. Okay, keep going. Don't stop. Relax your hand and feel the rebound. Feel that rebound. Relax your hand. Sit up with good posture. And most importantly, you have to smile. <laughs> Keep doing it. Absolutely. Guys. They're all doing it, right? Absolutely. I'm going to try something. Keep going, guys. Fantastic. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. All right, hold it right there. Beautiful. Excellent. So this, this was one exercise just to loosen your hands up. One quick thing now that Joe Morello taught me was the dribbling of the stick. So watch this here. Let the stick lay on your pad. And I'm going to dribble the stick like this. Just try that. Try doing that. My left hand just holds the stick gently. And I'm dribbling the stick. Try that. Good, guys. They're doing it? They're all doing it. Nice. So that's the understanding of the rebound of the free stroke. Let's go now to molar. Molar, we're going to hold our sticks. We're going to play triplets, both hands together. Where the whip happens, try that. Good, guys. I'm watching you. Keep going. Riley, looking good. James Agostino, looking good. 
<laughs> Alex, nice. Oh, Jono. Where's your smile, Jono? There you go. Miguel's got a smile. There's Etienne with the sticks up right on. Dom, you you disciplined, man. Dom. Woo! Yeah, Brandon's rocking. Rachel's Rachel's in the zone. Guy let me see one. some of them. Let me let me see if, some of them. If you go to gallery view, you can see them all at once. Yeah, you guys look good. If we oh listen to you, gosh. it's not going to work, but we can see your technique. Yeah, cool. You have any comments for any anything you're seeing? Keep going, guys. Boy, they all look fantastic. Keep your elbows relaxed. And the arc happens from the wrist. Good. Elbows right. relaxed. Elbows to your side. Let your Feel elbows that. relax more. You got a smile, Felix. Feel that. The most important thing is to show me your smile. You won't look too serious. We're drummers. We're having fun. Alexis, nice job. Yeah, yeah looking good. <laughs> yeah, guys. You know, I want to point something out. It's funny. When, when Dom just laughed and said smile, everybody's technique actually got a little looser. <laughs> so to, to, that really releases tension when you laugh and you smile. Absolutely. Yeah. So, that's, so that's molar. So molar... And again, Chris, you can go in your lessons more specific detail with this. The last was Billy Gladstone. And what Billy Gladstone talked about was finger technique. And the finger technique, Chris, and I'm not sure if you've shown them this, but oh, this yeah. exercise, you've done that, right? Oh, yeah. Now, I, I have to ask you a quick question with this. So I saw you on... Now, okay, so all my students have done this. There's probably maybe one or two of you that haven't. I make uh -huh. it for a minute straight minimum. On Drumeo, you did it two minutes. I think it was Drumeo, you said Shelly Mann had you do it for an hour. Like one I, hour. That is that literally true? Where you, like 60 minutes? That is literally true. Oh my gosh. When I went to the lesson, Shelly said the only way you're going to be able to feel the muscles develop. So I started doing this. And as I was doing it, he said, I will tell you when to stop. And as I was doing it, he then began to tell me a story. And the story he told me, which I thought was rather interesting, if you get a chance, and I believe it's on YouTube, you can go see the Gene Krupa story. Imagine a story about the drummer Gene Krupa. It was a movie in the movie theaters back in the 1950s. The Gene Krupa story. Go and watch this, it's a fantastic movie. And in the movie, Shelly Mann, who was my teacher, played a role in the movie. He played the role of the drummer Davy Tuff. So in the movie, the person that plays Davy Tuff is actually Shelly Mann, who was my teacher. So while I'm doing this exercise, he starts telling me the story about him filming this movie with Gene Krupa about the Gene Krupa story. <laughs> so I'm doing this. I am dying. I am like, my tongue is hanging out of my mouth on the floor. I'm like, oh, 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 I am going. And he was laughing hysterically, telling me the story. Well, after about 10 to 15 minutes, it felt great. It felt fantastic. So I, I kept on going. He told me the entire story. An hour went by, he said, stop. One hour, one exact hour went by. We laughed hysterically, but my fingers felt really good. I guess that's the barrier of 15 minutes because I've never broken that myself. If, if you just keep on going and you kind of have to just kind of get past that feeling of I, talking yourself out that you cannot do it when you actually can do it if you just keep on relaxing yourself. So what that exercise does is when we go to French grip position here, when we go to here and we utilize just our fingers, if you notice, I'm only playing fingers here. That's my left hand. Here's my right hand. Here's both hands. 
Try it, guys. So try that. Try that finger movement with your hands right now. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna change the view here. Yeah, if we go to gallery, nice. Brandon, try it out. Good. Yes. Look at Brandon, nice. Dominique, yeah. Woo! Dominique's here for business. Look nice, Dom. Nice. Yeah. Marcus, nice. Look at this here. Lex, Miguel, woo! Miguel, you're vibrating. Your whole body's vibrating. It's good, man. Alexis, yeah, nice. Rylan, looking good. Rachel, fantastic. Yeah, really good, Rachel. Jack, looking good. Lex, yeah, looking good. Marcus, go faster. You can go faster than that. Blast Beats. Marcus is a fan of Blast Beats. Uh, yeah, right on. Ben, looking good. More fingers, Ben. Ben Weinstein. Fantastic. Fingers, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Isa, nice. More fingers, Isa. Cool. Yeah, good. Fantastic, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Beautiful. <laughs> and Dom, we're all such big fans of you and your work and your 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 contribution. You know, you're you're definitely a servant leader in in not only the drumming world but just to everybody who meets you. And we're all massive fans of you. But there's somebody that wants to say hi to you, Alexis. You have a signed poster of Dom right behind you. I'm gonna unmute you and uh, say hi to Dom. Hi, Dom. Hi, <laughs> Alexa. How are you? Good. So before I I uh, I bought I got your pad sticks for yes. my birthday a couple of years back, and it came with a signed poster. Oh my gosh! How fantastic! Well, that is very exciting to see. And now you know that I'm looking over your shoulder. So keep on practicing because you are going to be the next generation of great drummers. Thank you. Thank you, dear. Fantastic. <laughs> She definitely is. <laughs> Guys, give Dom a round of applause for today. This is massive. <laughs> They're all applauding, I think. I'm going to check the gallery. Oh, good. Somebody's drumming. Good. <laughs> oh, great. Boy, this is great, guys. We can, we can do this again if you have it. Fantastic. Guys. If, if they have more questions, we can do this again at some point, Chris, for sure. We would be honored and... Just a quick uh, couple things to close. Guys, Modern Drummer Magazine. Dom, if you could, uh, that, uh, I, I have it written down my notes. What's the code that people can take advantage of a Modern Drummer subscription right now, guys? Absolutely. Go there. The promotional code is M-D-T-A-P. M-D-T-A-P. M -D -T -A -P. MD tap, you put in the promotional code. It's not that much money per month, but subscribe to the magazine. You're going to see some more things going on. I've got a call with Chris. I'm going to organize next week to explain to him to get him even more involved with what's happening with this here. So they also have a YouTube channel, Modern Drummer Official. Go to the YouTube channel and check that out and uh, subscribe to Modern Drummer. That'll be great to have us all connected. It's the only global drum magazine in the world. So let's all connect ourselves together with Modern Drummer. Massive thanks today, Dom. We'll definitely do this again. We all love you, and thanks so much for your contribution. Uh, guys, Dom is writing a book called the – what's the title of it, Dom? The Net. It's about being in the present moment, the now. Owning now. Owning now. Owning now. And, guys, just as, as we sign off today, just think about drumming and what it does for putting us in the present moment. And really, this is the, the challenge. I think this will get us through this challenge, what we're all going through together is like one moment at a time and really taking that into your drumming. Just be in the moment and just spread the joy, smile, and we'll all get through this, guys. We'll do it again. Absolutely, guys. Wait, thanks so much. If you get a chance to go to YouTube and watch the sessions panel, many interviews that I have with many, many top musicians, subscribe to that channel too. It's called The Sessions Panel. Go by and do it. Have fun. Practice. Enjoy yourself. And Chris will line us up and do it again. Get more questions. We'll have some more fun. Let's do it again, guys. And we have Klaus Hessler coming up for the next one. And a, and a ton of amazing surprise guest. So, guys, thank Bye. you. Thank you.
Thanks, Tom. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Have fun and stay healthy. Thanks. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye, bye. Bye. Thanks. See ya. Thanks, Colleen. Thank you so much. Bye. Everybody hey, guys. Thanks. Attitude of gratitude, guys. Shout it out. You're unmuted. Yeah. Say thanks. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Good job. Hey, awesome. Thanks. Thanks. Stay healthy in New York. So much. Absolutely, guys. Stay well. Stay safe. See you, guys. Thanks, Chris. See you for the next one. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Dom. Bye, guys. Bye.